Uh, we are ready to resume uh, testimony. Uh, Mr. Smestad, who is the next witness? I would call Dr. Furlov. So welcome to the beginning of day seven. The first witness the prosecution called was yet another doctor. This one is the doctor who examined Isaac's body. And once again, no one is saying that Mew is innocent of stabbing that kid in the heart. The question is whether or not it was self-defense. And just like the last doctor, this one also conveniently doesn't understand how inertia works. So we'll be skipping this testimony in favor of the interrogation video and the investigator who conducted it. But first, the judge removes the jury so that Carl Anderson can argue his way into putting sufficient limits on the defense's questions for the investigator, as well as which parts of the interrogation video they're not going to play for the jury. So let's just listen to that first. Uh, Mr. Smestan, Mr. Anderson. So at, Lieutenant Hart testified at the preliminary hearing pretty much uh, part of it was about her interview. A good chunk of it was summarizing the video. So I just want to make sure, given the court's ruling previously, that there's not going to be questions of her interpretation of the video when she wasn't there. Um, that's a question for the jury. Also, there, we're going to play the entire interview from the very start until the interview ends when Lieutenant Hart leaves. There's like approximately 15 minutes or so after that where the camera keeps running that we're not going to play. That, but it incorporates part, you know, going over Miranda with Mew. So I just want to make sure there's not going to be any questions suggesting that his right to an attorney was violated. It's irrelevant. The court has already ruled that it wasn't. Um, that he waived knowingly, intelligently, his right to counsel. Uh, who wants to speak? Um, I'm not, I wasn't planning on challenging a Miranda issue at this point. Um, I do think, however, that the last, that the video should be played in its entirety. And what I mean by that is uh, there's a period of time where the video is still running. Uh, Lieutenant Hart leaves the room and Mr. Mew is speaking. Uh, on the tape, and he makes some statements on that. There's no reason that the jury shouldn't get to hear those. Um, they're relevant. They go to his state of mind, and I, I'm asking that the court, if they're going to play the tape, they play the entirety of the tape. Um, I'm going to play it if they don't play it, I guess. Um, and I think that the rule of completeness would require that the entirety of the video be played for the fact finder. Mr. Anderson? They have no legal basis. If we didn't want to admit the video at all, they have no legal basis to admit the hearsay statements of their client. He's not a party opponent for them. Um, rule of completeness is not a Trojan horse around hearsay. There's a case that I cited to in our motion in Limine where it was a tax evasion case and the defendant said, admitted to not paying taxes, but said it was because the accountant has access to all the records. The state admitted the first statement that he admitted to not paying, and the defense was not allowed to get in the but because it's self-serving. Here, it's not even part of an interview. I think from my stance, I, I thought about playing it because he's clearly putting on continuing the acting show, um, but it's 15 minutes of him sitting there and mumbling to himself, and I think it's not a good use of our time, so I'm not putting it in. They have no authority to put it in, it's hearsay. What is the authority beyond completeness? Well, I think that's what it is, Judge. It's, um, if they play a portion of the video, I think the rule of completeness would allow me to play the rest of it to put it into context. Yeah, what, what's the context that's missing, though? The context that's missing is I don't believe, that Lieutenant Hart didn't tell Mr. Mew that he was being recorded upon leaving. He makes statements which support his defense, okay? He makes statements to himself not knowing he's recorded. Uh, why would they attack me? Why would they attack me? He's saying that to himself um, unbeknownst, I, I think, that he's being recorded. And I think if you're going to play portions of it which are, according to the state, would be considered incriminating, the idea that the, in the video in its entirety should be played um, in order to give the jury a, a complete and accurate record of, in fact, what he said. 
the rule of completeness is meant to prevent distortion. So an example where the rule of completeness would perfectly apply is if, say, there's a bank robbery. Defendant says, yeah, I was at the bank, but that was a month before. If we just admitted, yeah, I was at the bank, and then argued, oh, he's admitting to being at the scene, rule of completeness would allow the rest of the statement, because otherwise we're clearly distorting his statement. So nothing about this implicates the rule of completeness. All right, this time I'm going to rule that the state is not obligated to play the entire video. Uh, it's part of the state's case. Uh, the state is entitled to play the portions it believes uh, support its uh, case. And uh, the state is under no legal obligation to play the entire video. Um, I disagree that the rule of completeness applies in this circumstance. Uh, my understanding of the rule of completeness is to prevent words from being taken out of context, uh, similar to the example that Mr. Anderson gave. It doesn't mean that if you play part of a video, you have to play all of the video. Uh, and clearly, Mr. Uh, Mew's uh, statements to himself uh, are hearsay and would otherwise be inadmissible uh, if offered by uh, Mr. Mew. Uh, so that's my ruling. Look, I completely understand why the judge isn't allowing that last 15 minutes of the interrogation video to play. Because it technically doesn't really fall under the rule of completion. But just ask yourself this one question. Why would a prosecutor not want extra evidence to come in? And if he really doesn't think it's a big deal and that it helps his case more than it does the defense, why not just let it play? Suddenly he's worried about wasting the court's time. This is the guy who ordered a 3D scan of the river and then had a guy come in and testify on it. And if that doesn't sound familiar, it might be because I skipped over that because why do we need it? The prosecution wasted my time, your time, and the court's time by answering tons of questions that no one asked. But I can't say it wasn't effective because somehow these huge tubs of lard won this case. And that's probably because the defense attorney's hands are tied behind their backs. I mean, these guys weren't even allowed to ask questions about Nick Mew's character. I didn't hear anything from defense that they're not going to be asking Lieutenant Hart's interpretation of the video. She also hadn't seen the video at the time of the interview. She testified at the preliminary examination. She provided a statement under oath. And I think if she denies certain things, I should be able to impeach her with that. And I think the area that the state doesn't want me to get into is when Lieutenant Hart says he's surrounded on all sides. He has no route of escape. They want that because it affects the retreat instruction. And she testified to that under oath that that, in fact, was true. How is it relevant, though? How is, how is Lieutenant Hart's conclusions and observations from watching the video relevant? Because it goes to what a reasonable person believed. Well, I don't mean to be flippant here, but no. she's not the reasonable person standard. I, it's it's more objective than that, than what uh, Lieutenant Hart sorry, thinks. Good. It's more, it's broader than what Lieutenant Hart thinks. Right, but I think that her her observations that he had no that he had no means of escape. Uh, the state's going to argue that he had that he could have left. And he still argue that. I I understand he can argue it, but one of their investigators is saying that's not true. He didn't have a means of escape once the attack started, which is where the retreat instruction kicks in. She testified under oath at a preliminary examination. The crowd worked his their way behind him. I asked her, so would you agree at that point there was no means of, of leaving? And she said, yes, that's true. Again, I'm, I'm ruling that to be inadmissible. Uh, and this is a, a ruling that I've made with all of the witnesses. And that is, we're not commenting on what the witness observes in the video. Uh, we're not taking a poll of uh, witnesses to get their opinions and their conclusions about what they see and what they think happened. Um, Lieutenant Hart was not a participant. She had played no role in the events on the Apple River. Uh, she is an observer of the video, uh, just like anybody else in this courtroom, just like anybody sitting on the jury. And it is the jury's opinion about what they see that matters, not what Lieutenant Hart thinks or what I think or what some other witness thinks they see in the video. Uh, so that's why I don't think it's relevant, and that's why I've uh, not allowed the witnesses to ask or the attorneys to ask witnesses to comment on what they think and conclude uh, based on observations in the video. Yeah, thanks a lot, Waterman. So then they finally bring the jury back in. All rise for the jury. And then we get started with the testimony. Uh, Mr. Smestad, who is the next witness? Uh, call Lieutenant Hart. Lieutenant, please come forward. Please face the clerk, raise your right hand, and be sworn. Do you swear that the testimony in the Boston matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the 
Thank you. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Smestad. Can you state your name for the record, please? Yes, Brandy Hart, H-A-R-T. And uh, what's your occupation? I am the Special Services Lieutenant for the St. Croix County Sheriff's Office. Uh, what are your general duties as a Special Services Lieutenant? I supervise um, our nine investigators, our seven uh, deputies in court services, and the evidence room. Um, how many years have you been with the St. Croix County Sheriff's Office? 25. Um, what roles have you held over those years? Um, I started in the jail. Um, I worked there for three years. I went to patrol for six years. Um, after that, I was promoted to investigations where I spent 14 years before I became a lieutenant. How many years have you been a lieutenant? Uh, two and a half. Uh, do you recall um, July 30th, 2022? I do. Were you on duty that day? No. Uh, did you get called in? I did. Uh, in your current role, would you normally be involved in an investigation of this sort? Yes. Did you get contacted uh, regarding the stabbings on the Apple River that day? I did. Um, what was the information you were initially told? Um, Investigator Schiltz called me um, and told me that there had been multiple stabbings on the Apple River. <clears throat> um, were you at home at the time? I was. I was doing yard work. Um, did you um, get asked to come in? Yes. Um, were you given any specific duties or assignments? Um, at that point, we were just looking for manpower. The suspect hadn't been located, and we were going to formulate a plan. What did you do? What was your part in the investigation? Um, I got to the Apple River about an hour, hour after the first call came in, um, and at that point, uh, Mr. Mew had been taken into custody, and his group had, was standing along the end of the river. All right. Um, what did you do when you got to the river? Um, I believe I um, spoke with some of my colleagues, and then I ended up um, taking Sandy Mew to the Somerset Police Department to interview her. All right. And did you interview Sandy? I did. Um, what did you do after that? Um, after that, I coordinated her getting back with her group. Some of them had come to the police department, um, and because all the other investigators were interviewing witnesses, uh, I went to the jail. Right, uh, were you asked to do anything specific at the jail? I interviewed Mr. Mew. Um, was that interview recorded? It was. Um, how was it recorded? Um, audio and video. Were you wearing a body cam or is there some other system? Um, I have a recording device on, on my cell phone, and so I recorded the audio version that way, and then there's an overhead camera at the jail that recorded the video. Do you remember what time it was that you interviewed uh, Mr. Mew at the jail? Yeah, it was about 10 to 8. Um, at that point, had you seen Jawan Cockfield's video of what happened on the river? I had not. Did you know there was a video? I did. Did Mr. Mew know that? Conjecture and speculation. Sustained. Prior to your interview with him, did you tell him there was a video of the incident? I did not. You reviewed Exhibit 15? I did. Um, can you tell us what it is? Yeah, it's a copy of my interview with Mr. Mew at the jail. Uh, is it recorded on a specific kind of device? Yes, it's on a thumb drive. All right, Your Honor, uh, permission to publish Exhibit 15. And now they're going to play the interrogation video. Hi there, are you Nick? Yeah. Hi, Nick. My name is Brandy. Hi. Right. I'm a lieutenant with the St. Croix County Sheriff's Office, okay? Um, you got some water, right? Great, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have you had anything to eat? No. Okay, let me... Uh, Can I will wait for now. Okay. Food. Are you sure? I'm not happy. Okay. Well, if you get hungry, yeah. just uh, let these guys know, okay? Or let me know when I can. Um, I'm just very thirsty. Yeah, I bet. Uh, I'll see the lawn. I'm out on the river drinking beer all day and not drinking any water. And, and it's hot and, and yeah. yeah. Being in the sun all day. Doesn't matter if you're drinking beer. Sometimes you just go. And then this, yeah. So I would imagine that you have some questions. Well, um, I am just going to go through the rights form and, you know, let you know if you want to answer any of my questions. We'll talk about that. Um, I'm going to record our conversation, sure. if you're okay with that. Of course. Um, let's see, today is the 30th of July, and it is 7.53 p.m., how do you spell your first name? N-I-C-O-L-A-E. Okay. 
And last name, and no middle name. No middle name, no. okay. Yeah. And what's your last name? M-I-U. How do you spell, or uh, how do you pronounce that? Miu. Okay. And what's your birthday? Do you, do you like to be called Nikolai or Nick, or Nick. what's Nick? Okay. Yeah. Um, December 11th. 1969. Okay, so that makes you? 52. 52. 52. Thank you. And, and I understand you're married to Sandy. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, is she okay? She is. Yeah. She's she, I did talk to her. I talked to her for quite a while. Um, I brought her to get the dry clothes. Okay. Um, Where is she? Um, she is with Ernesto and Amy. Okay, good. good. They're taking good care of her. And then? Uh, Titi, my puppy. Uh, she's headed home to take care of the dog. Um, and she's also with uh, Ariel, Ariel and uh, well, his girlfriend. Oh God, I don't even know. Is it Tatiana? No, Tatiana. Tatiana is another girl. Okay. But she's Hold not on, they Tatiana. gave me... Yes. Oh, Sandy didn't know Ariel's girlfriend's name. Neither do I. Okay. But Ernesto and Amy they, they came to, to where I was with Sandy and they went and got the car. But I had brought Sandy to the car to she get changed. Driving, right? No, she was uh, with me. I brought her from the river to the car okay. so she could get clothes, and we brought the cooler back and put that in the car. Um, so she's got all the stuff. All right. Are you working anywhere now? Mm-hmm. Okay, where do you work? I work at Reach Engineering as a mechanical engineer. And what what kind of engineering? What mechanical was that? Mechanical engineer. Yeah. What's the name of your employer? Oh, Richie. R I T C H I E. What was the last grade that you completed? I have a uh, bachelor's and I have actually two degrees, one okay. in engineering, one in mathematics. Wow. And I'm a class away from a master's in both. I'm not a dummy and I've never run, never had a uh, run uh, with the law except when I got the uh, world we'll, we'll joke. Okay. That. Uh, so where did you get your uh, degree from, your undergraduate South degree? South Dakota State University. Okay. Is that the bison? No, the Jack Rabbit. Oh, okay. And um, and how about your master's degree? Where are you working on I'm that? Not, I'm not working on it yet. Okay. Yeah, I did pass the EIT so that I could work gotcha. um, for the state as a licensed sure. engineer, but I haven't had a chance to do that. For many years, I worked as a contractor, a contracting engineer. And then for the past 16 years, I've been working with uh, Richie Engineering, where I met Sandy. Okay. What uh, What does Richie Engineering do? Like, what do they yes. manufacture? Uh, what do we do? We do uh, HVAC service equipment. Okay. Basically, we're the, the top tier of HVAC. We're like the top brand. Uh, and the top brand for that is Yellow Jacket. Okay. And is that for the parts? The, the brand of the, 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 yeah, yeah, everything we, we make there, we make it under the Yellow Jacket brand. Got it. But okay. the company, the name is Ricci Engineering. Okay. So what I do, I do everything from hoses, recovery machines, all the electronics. I uh, talk to customers, I uh, get business, I do the documentation, the design. It's a small company, okay. so I like to do everything. Testing, evaluation, um, you name it. And wow. Sixteen years over there, and that's not even that's not even scratching the surface. Really? I, well, I have bigger dreams now, yeah. shattered. But anyway, I don't want to talk about them right now. Okay. I don't know exactly what happened. I just don't. I, I can't talk about it. I need to go one step at a time. Yep. And if you have any questions along the way, Nick, yes. just stop and ask me, okay? Or if you need to take a break, just... How bad is it? Well, can we get through this form and ask each other <laughs> yes, questions? Yes. I just, I don't want to, I want to maintain the integrity of yeah. this All investigation right. and your rights and, you know, so I want to get through this form and then yes. we can ask questions, okay? So I'm going to turn this around. Um, I'll give you this pen. What I'll have you do is I'm going to read each. Uh, you, you seem to speak excellent English. Yeah. You can read. Yeah, Miranda, Miranda, Miranda right? Yeah. yeah. Which have not been read to me when I was put in the car. Is that and, right? and that's okay. As long as they weren't asking you any questions, they don't need to. Oh. But I'd like to ask these questions, so that's why we're going to go through this right now. Right. Okay. So I'll let you have that pen, and so I'm going to read these to you. Okay. Mm-hmm. You have the right to remain silent. Yes. Or just. Read uh, uh, you can check mark it, or some people put their initials. Oh. You know, we'll have you sign it at the bottom, so sure. that's well, however you want to do that. Anything you say can be used against you in court or other proceedings. Mm-hmm. 
You have the right to consult an attorney before making any statement or answering any question, and you may have him or her present with you during questioning. Okay. And also, George, stop would, me, I, I, I yeah, talk kind of fast. Yeah, I was okay. going to ask you about this one. Okay. So, yep. how, when do I see one? When do I get one assigned to me? You would get one assigned to you the, er, the soonest uh, would be on Monday. Oh. So that would be the, the soonest. Um, and working hours, working hours, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Is mm -hmm. like how that works. Okay. So if you cannot afford to pay for an attorney, you may be eligible to be represented by an attorney from the office of the state public defender. If you desire an attorney from that office, you should contact their local office. And, and that information would be provided to me, or yes. Um, so what happens is. Uh, they, we actually, the jail provides that information every day to the public defender's office. Like here's who's on the list. Okay. So some people come into jail and they uh, either have a lawyer mm -hmm. already because of other things or they know a lawyer or mm -hmm. th they're going to find their own. So right. these guys will let you use the phone if that's... If I'll that's ask Candy to look for me okay. that's okay. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah, because I don't, I'm not, not going to see you in time. Yeah. Anyway. Nope, that's fine. If you decide to answer questions now, with or without an attorney, you still have the right to stop the questioning at any time or stop the questioning for the purpose of consulting an attorney. Yeah, I'd like to do it at, at some point. Okay. You can just check mark that. We went over that. However, you may waive the right to remain silent and you may answer questions now without an attorney. You can just check mark that I read that to you. You're not agreeing to anything right now. This is just that I that I stated these things to you. So this says the above rights have been read to me. I have initialed each paragraph, or in your case, check mark, to show that I understand each of my rights. I have received a copy of this form. So you sign it, and then I'm going to sign it, Nick, and then I'm going to give you a copy of it. So I would like to ask you questions about your day today, what happened, uh, you know, like how you, how you guys got to be in the Apple River today, and then like what your day was like. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to you if you're willing to answer questions. If you decide that, yep, I'll answer questions right now, and in 10 minutes you don't want to answer anymore, you just need to tell me that, okay? And if you don't want to answer questions right now, then that's fine too, and I will leave. It, it's up to you. All I can say, it was a uh, it was self-defense, self-defense, there are lots of people on, on it that came on to me. Self-defense and they produced two weapons, one I took from them. Okay. That's the only thing I can tell. And they were, they hit me and they were on top of me and that's, I don't remember anything after that. I just remember I ran away. I ran away to my, to my uh, group. There were actually people coming over from my group to see what was going on, I said, nothing, 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 just get back on, and, and they kept asking, and I said, nothing, nothing, I didn't explain to them anything, because I, w I was I was so fearful, I didn't know what these people were doing to us, I've never been in a situation like this, where people produce weapons, on, and they were saying, they were uh, calling, um, don't, I, I don't remember, but they said, don't run, away, don't, don't run from us, don't do this, uh, you're a child molester, you are this. And the guy said, are you people drunk? Or oh, you're a child molester. I said, the only thing I remember is, in my mind is, if I'm a child molester, should you be drinking? Should you be drinking alcohol and, and doing what you're doing to people that you don't even know, attacking them? And I said, if, if I'm a child molester, you should be having alcohol, you know. And and they took my, uh, I was snorkeling, so they took my snorkel away, they threw it in the water, they grabbed my pants, one wanted to pull my pants down, and I grabbed onto him, and I don't know who that kid was, but he produced, he had a knife on, on him. And then there was another uh, knife, a longer knife, uh, looked like a kitchen knife, um, okay. kitchen or something, I don't know. And I don't know what happened to either one of them. I just know that I, I when, when, when the kid attacked me, I took that from him. The kitchen knife or the other no, knife? No, the, small, the smaller knife. Okay, what did that knife look like? Do you remember? I don't even remember. But it was smaller? Smaller, yes. Okay. 
So that's all. How I did you get to be by them, or who are so, these people? So uh, Ariel lost his phone. Okay. The phone was in the floor. One of those bags. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he, uh, everyone had one, but his phone was in the floor. So he says, "Well, let's go look for it." So I put, put my smartphone on, and I looked, and this guy found something. And they were talking about it. And I said, okay. This group of people? This group oh, of people, gotcha. yeah. I went over, and I said, did you guys find the phone? And if you did, can I see it? Can I identify it? And they started calling me names. They got off of their tubes. They came at me. And I, I said, all I need. And they were calling me all kinds of names, insulting me for being in the water with a, with a snorkel. And I said, all I want, guys, did you find the phone? And I saw they had, a, they had found something, okay. all right? And I don't know if there was a phone or something else they found, but they wouldn't talk to me about what they found. And we were looking desperately to find this phone. And I know somebody found it, but I thought it was that group. Okay. You know, and then they went over, they, they came to me and they, they grabbed my snorkel and they threw it in the water. Well, the water was so fast, it went under. So I went out after it, and they started, uh, another group of mostly girls came over from, from the other side, yelling at me or calling me child molester and what, what, something with, uh, yeah, something like that. And I, I, I went back. I went, I actually, after this incident, I didn't even, I didn't, don't even know what happened. I just know that they, they attacked me and I had I was in self defense. I went into self defense mode and then I went over to my my uh, group of people. That was it. And they asked me what happened and I wouldn't tell. Them. I said I can't tell you. I let me calm down. Okay. I was I was shocked. So nobody on that knew exactly what happened. The only thing they say, said well, you know, look, somebody got in an argument over there like. Yep, let's just, let's just leave that alone, don't, 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 don't go there. Are you able to draw for me, like, where you were looking for the phone? Like, and where the, where was Ernesto and Sandy and where was the school? Maybe it would help where me kind of understand. Oh. Yep. These guys were here. I don't know how many, there were quite a few. Okay. We were up, up river about, about a hundred. 100 feet, where our group was here. And so you guys were in the water? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we were in the water. And then there was another group of people over here that came to to attack me. So there was this group of people here, this group of people that attacked me, that attacked me here. So your, your, your group was floating down the river like this? Actually, we're stuck. But yes, this is the That's direction. the direction you yeah. were going. Okay, so your group is stopped. Yeah. And where's, where's, who's looking for the phone besides you? Like, how so, do you know the phone is missing? Oh, yeah, we talked about it. I yelled oh, okay. at those phone boxes and I lost my phone. And so, well, you didn't lose it. It's floating down Because it's in that bag. Yeah, so let's go find it, you know. And he was over here pouting that he lost his phone. And I said, that's okay, I have my snorkeling gear. And then I heard this guy say that he found something. And when I was snorkeling down, I, I passed him. I kept looking, and then I came up, I came looking, and then they started yelling and screaming, and, and I said, did you guys find something? And I thought they did. And I, I, I know they did, because they were hiding something from me. When, and then I went over there, and they grabbed my snorkel, they threw it down, they, they started, uh, they got off their, their uh, tubes, they came after me, they pushed me, one of them hit me, and then there was a girl that came from here and hit me in the back of my head. And I was about right there. You said right here? And when she hit me, yeah. And that's when the, the female hit you? Yeah. And she was coming from another group over here. I don't know how many people were in there. But were these guys stopped? Uh, yes, in very shallow water. Okay, so it's really shallow over here? Shallow there. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much the two sides are shallow. Are shallow. Yeah. Was it, what, how deep do you think it was when you were, like, snorkeling around with the oh, water? Oh, four or five feet. Okay. Not very deep. And the water was very murky, so I could not see anything. Really? From my uh, goggles. But those goggles are lost. We took them, we grabbed them off my face, and threw them in the water. We found the goggles. Oh, good. Thank you. And the snorkel.
Yes, yes, yep. yep. Well, are they connected? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. And they're just like regular front yeah. goggles, right? Yeah, and I had okay. them over when I went to, to the Caribbean. Okay. Yeah. What do they look like? Just to make sure we have white. the right one. White? Tran well, transparent plastic with the white snorkel. Okay. All right. Yeah. Is that it? I think, I think we have them. Okay. Um, was there any, did it seem like these groups were together? After they came after me, I don't know. I th I, yes. Okay. Yes, I think so. I mean, I feared for my life. Tell you the truth, when they started uh, hitting me and and and, and pointed a, a knife at me, and then another kid pointed a knife, I thought that was it for me. Luckily, I took it from from the one of the young kids, and I think that's when I swung back. What did you do with it? I don't even know. Okay. I don't know. Absolutely, I don't know. I don't know if you got it back. I have absolutely no idea. Did you hit him? Like, did, it, did the knife make contact with him? That I don't remember. Okay. You were so close. Sure. And one had it in his hand, so I took his hand and I bent it and I poked him with, with his own hand. And then I, I took it from his hand and then I, I went and swung like this. So I don't know who I hit. I just know, I just know that I took the knife from from one of the kids. Okay. The other one, I don't know what happened to. I, I didn't get hit. Because as soon as this happened, I started running across. So I went across to to my group. And then my group was wondering, well, well, what just happened? Was it? And I didn't, I didn't want to tell them anything. Just that you didn't want to? I didn't want to get uh, anybody aroused. I didn't want my group to go say, well, we're going to go talk to those kids. No, they were too drunk, I believe. They were too drunk and too to set on, on, on uh, going off to people, I think. How did, what were these guys doing? Did they, they, know, did, did they know anything was going on? No. So I they didn't know you were getting punched or? Well, they saw the scuffle because at one point, uh, Ernesto who was, was coming towards me like, hey man, did you find anything, anything? And I said, no, I didn't. I don't know. These guys must have it or something. I don't know. I, and, and he says, okay, well, well, he will just get another phone by Monday. He, he were concerned about getting the phone. And like, okay, so well, what are you doing? I said, I don't know, I'm just going to go leave this shit in my, 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 my thing. And then Sandy said, okay, are you okay? And he said, I don't want to talk about it. You know, and then they asked me, hey, what do you want to do? You want to stay here? You want to go down? And I said, I want to go down. And then... <clears throat> Did some girls from my group heard that uh, something was happening over here and they said, well, we're calling the police and I think they called the police. Okay. One or two, I don't know. Did you see any of, the, of that, what was going on no. when they decided to call the police? No. Okay. No. Um, did you have a knife? Did no, you? no, absolutely. No. Okay. I had one earlier that I used to cut, but right at the beginning and I left it on, on the, in the, I, I don't even know what I, what I did with it. I think I either gave it to one of the people or I put it back in my truck. Okay. Yeah. So it may have been, I, I, don't, I tell you the truth, I don't even know. And that was so, after you cut the string? Yeah, we needed to uh, have a, something to cut the string over there. They don't have any knives. But you have them with you today, right? The what? A knife to cut. How did that? I think it's in my car. Okay. Yeah. I think did you drive or did Sandy drive? I did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I, I don't even know uh, where it's at, tell the truth. Uh, it may be in one of the bags we had with us. It may have been in, in um, I, I don't know. It may be I left it, put it back in the car. Because I went back with a bunch of, I had ra uh, uh, straps. I didn't want to pay for a string. But they say string you is cheap. You can't. Well, they probably don't want you to have straps. But they told me, uh, you, they said, yeah, if you have straps, there was a kid over there. If you have straps, no problem, but the, the, the string is free. So I said, okay, I'll take the string. Okay. You know, and then I took the straps back. So, because straps can puncture the... Yeah. yeah. So I took, I had a whole bag of straps that I took back to my car. Okay, and so maybe the knife was with the straps? Uh, probably. 
Do, do you have any cuts or marks on you? Have you had a chance to like look at your no. torso or? Uh, uh, somebody was telling me that I'm bleeding from my ear, from my left ear. Who told you that? Oh, I think it was Amy. They said, make your bleeding from your left ear. I went like this, and I went in the water, I cleaned, and then, but I don't see any blood. You know, and I, I really, I don't know if you see any cuts, but I, I, I don't. I don't. Yeah, uh, so I don't know where the, why I was bleeding from my ear. Uh, but Amy saw blood? I think she says you're bleeding from your ear, Nick. And then I cleaned and I said, look, there is nothing. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it was blood or if it was wheat she saw. I have no idea. We were like, she was on the other side and I was just... Yeah, so she's over here, she's right? She's over here, yeah, right here. Oh, so she's yeah. closest, Amy's over here, closest yeah. to the shore? Yeah. Okay. With the nestle right here. And I was over here somewhere in one of these. Okay, and you got back in that tube then mm -hmm. when it was time yeah, to go? Yeah, I got back in my own tube, yes. Okay. Did, did Ernesto come and get you? No. Like, did anybody know that you were getting no. punched or...? No. No. Was anybody... They wanted to talk, to talk to me about the phone, if I found the phone and what did those guys say, and I said, they probably did, they don't want to give it up, they're, they're, they attacked me, and that's it. And then I said, let's go, I don't want to be here. Yeah. So they don't know what happened here. You they didn't tell anybody? No. Okay. No. You're the first one to know. Okay. That's why probably Amy and everybody else is so surprised. Well, they're worried about you. Yeah. I mean, and, they, and even Ernesto was like, I don't know how the hell this happened. <laughs> he, he, they don't know anything because I didn't, I didn't know what to tell, tell them. Yeah. I really don't know. Everything happened so fast. I, I really don't remember why they attacked me. I don't know why they took my small small fellow away. I don't know why one of them wanted to pull, pull my pants down. I don't know why they were being so mean. I just don't know. Yeah. I just don't know. And why did they uh, want to scare me with, with a knife? I just don't know why they're, they're scaring people on the river. I mean, it's a family-oriented river with, with knives and, 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 you know, what they did. So were the two males that had knives? I saw females. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And were they both from this group, or do you even, no, do you even know? Well, that I don't know. Okay. One of them was from this group. The okay. one that I took the smaller knife from, I think, was from this group. Okay. So you took the smaller knife from one of them. And is that the one that you said that you kind of went? Yes. Uh, basically, like. Oh, I, I was, I was, I was going like this. I wanted, I wanted out. You were coming, and they were punching me, and they, they were. Uh, circling me and they came really close, they were pushing me in the water and I just grabbed the kid's knife. I didn't even know if I was holding it right. I just grabbed it from him because he tried to poke me with it. So, I feared for my life. It sounds like I was very shocked. I was extremely shocked. I couldn't even say anything to anybody. I had locked jaw. I don't know. Right now, I don't even know how this happened, how I got away from all that. So when they were pushing you in the water, did you go underwater or were you, I, you I remain tripped. standing? No, I tripped. Okay. I tripped and went and fell in the water a couple of times, yes. Um, where on your body did they hit you? In the back of my, my, my back. And I know one of the girls came over and splat me right over my right ear. I couldn't even see what they were doing because I was, I was tripping tripping over the stones and I was falling down and they were just jumping on me. I was fearing for my life. I'm still fearful that they're going to find out who I am and go do something to, to, to Sandy and possibly some of these people over here. I fear that somehow they're going to find out who I am and continue their whatever that was. And I don't know why they're so hateful. and. I, I just don't get it. I mean, this is the second time I come to the river, the first time for my wife, and I promised her it was going to be a beautiful outing, and nothing to fear. We had a lot of booze. She didn't drink because she was the designated driver. But 
most of us didn't. And there was another girl that didn't drink on the other party because they wanted to drive home. We ate well, we had music, everything was so good, so good, so good. Of course, I had a lot of alcohol, who doesn't, you know, we're... Well, you had a sober ride. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't smell it on you. Were you drinking yeah. beer or vodka beer. or what? No, 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 okay. we don't do uh, hardly because then we dehydrate too fast and yep. then we get friends. Okay. So after my quadruple bypass, I still have friends. Oh, yay, quadruple bypass? How long yeah. ago was that? A year and a half ago. Wow. Yeah, so if you see any wires in my chest, in my sternum, that's from the way. Really? You have a so pacemaker in there too or anything? No. no? Mm -mm. I, I tell you the truth, I'm, I'm scared because I'm not in the best of health, okay? Yeah. I'm just going down the river, probably should not have even drank or drank that much beer, but the doctor never said don't drink. Sure. You know, especially beer you can have as much as you want in moderation. I was in cold water, yep. you know, so... But, you know, yeah, yeah, and then missing vein here and then from my leg. Is that what they used to? Yeah, cut, take, take it here, take it from here, cut it in half, that's two. The same thing from my uh, mm -hmm. leg, cut it in half, use the other two, so it's quadruple bypass. Wow. Yeah, I was dead. This, my heart stopped five hours. Wow. Had you had a heart attack that mm -hmm. prompted that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yikes. So I was in pretty bad shape. It sounds like it. Yeah. I bet Sandy was pretty scared. She was because uh, I was in the hospital for, for quite some time. I bet. At Methodist Hospital. But it, they did a great job, uh, you know, and Methodist Hospital is probably one of the best hospitals for heart yeah, for surgeries, if you know somebody, I'll point them to Methodist. Yeah, my father-in-law had, had heart surgery there, too. He had a heart yeah, attack a few yeah. years ago, and that's what so, he So, yeah. Um, Do you need some more? No, that's it. Are you sure? I got an extra bottle here. So, you want it? Yes, please. I can't travel with all... It's uh, brand new, too. I didn't yes, drink no, out of it no, yet, no, so... No, 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 I understand. Thank you so uh, much. I probably am going to drink out of it now, so you can have yes. that, and I'm, this is going to be my I part. really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I take a medication that makes me really, really thirsty. So I have bottles of water rolling around in my back seat. I've got I'm them in the door pocket. Take, I'm supposed to take mine, but they're at home, and I don't know when I'm going to take them. Okay, uh, so you have medication that you oh need? Oh, yeah. Okay. I have five medication. Because um, I can call Sandy and see... Uh, oh, I'm not going to have her drive over here. Well, I might be able to send somebody to go get them. Oh. Okay. Just so that they get back here. And I mean, She's still right. shaking right now. She is... Probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, but we need we need to make sure you have your medication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would, like I said, I wouldn't have her drive. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I might be able to send somebody there to oh. get them. What medications do you take, Nick? Oh my God. Are they all heart related, or some do different well, things? Two of them are heart related. Okay. Yeah. One is aspirin. That's heart related, right? The yeah. Blood thinning. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, uh, uh, potassium, because I'm getting a lot of muscle cramps. Okay, um, that's four. There is one. There's another one. Uh, I'll tell you when I remember. Okay, no worries. Yeah. Um, were you on your phone at all during during your day today? I know that Sandy didn't bring her phone. I took some pictures. Okay. And then I put it away. Sandy does not like to take a lot of pictures because then they get posted on uh, Facebook, Facebook or Instagram or something. Yeah, but I'm okay if they take them, if they post them. Yeah, I did take a few. Didn't have a chance to do anything with them. Okay. Yeah, but did I was not on the phone. I didn't call anybody. Okay. Did you use your phone around the time? No. Like right before, you know, you. We're looking for the phone no, or anything no, like that? Not me. I, okay. Not like these guys are constantly on their phones. That's why uh, I yeah, lost his. Because he was on it too much? People can't enjoy life you know, nowadays going down the river without being on their phones. Of course, they take a lot of pictures, but it, the picture is not the same experience as being there. So, okay. I don't know. Um, so do you think the pictures that you took were like at the beginning of your journey, or where do you oh, think? Oh, we did take, uh, I took a, a couple of group ones where they have that music uh, place in the bathrooms. Okay. We made a, a stop there to eat sandwiches. 
There were a lot of people over there. That that uh, beach was completely full. Lots of people there. Lots of people. It was a beautiful day. In it Texas. was. And you this and this now will probably close that place down. You think so? Yes. Well, I don't know what 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 resulted of it because I I don't know. Is this you? Yes. Okay. Who? What do you think was happening at that time? They were, they were fighting me. They, they pointed the knife at me. They pointed the knife at me. B both boys pointed the knife at me. Okay. Did you see anyone take this picture of you? No, God, no. I was, I was actually very, very uh, um, scared. Yeah. I was very scared. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what they were doing and why. I mean, I understand they were drunk, but you get drunk, I get drunk, we all get drunk. We don't do that kind of stuff, especially on a family a, a river like this, family outing. We don't do that kind of stuff. Did but you I was very, you see, I was very, very scared. I didn't know what was going to happen next. Did you see the woman that hit you in the ear? Did you see mm -hmm. her at all? No. I turned around, she hit me again. Okay. Do you remember what her bathing suit looked like? Mm, no. She was wearing? And she, she was just yelling at me and calling me a... Uh, 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 child molester. That's how it all started. They kept calling me a child molester. I don't know, out of the blue. And then they wanted to beat me up because they said I'm a child molester. And then my argument back was to them was, if I'm a child molester and you're children, you shouldn't be drinking. You should not be out here drinking, okay, and doing what you're doing. Where are your pants? Did they look like they were young? Oh, they like were, I don't know. I think they look pretty young to me. Okay. I don't think they were of the age of uh, drinking. Really? Yeah. I I think. I mean, I don't I, I don't know. I don't hang out with with people like that. My my generation and the people I hang out with are much older people. Like Ernesto and Sandy. Like Ernesto and yeah. Sandy and yeah. Amy. Yeah. 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 Amy is probably one of the youngest one there. Sure. 50, 45 and Sandy is 61. Yeah. So I'm younger, you know. So you said that they were standing really close to you. They were on I top of me. They okay. were pushing me, shoving me. I tripped. I fell down. I got up. And I, that's where I saw the, the one of the kids there. It was the closest kid with a, with, a, with a knife. And I grabbed it from him. And that was the, the smallest? Yes, kid. yes. And he was in front of you? Was he, was he as close as we are? Or was oh, he, he was closer. closer. He okay. was closer. He was closer. But as soon as he came with the knife, I grabbed the knife from him. And what I did then, I mean, I shouldn't show you, but I, I grabbed, twisted his, his uh, uh, arm and poked him with, with, his, and with his own uh, knife. Then, okay. then I took it from him and I started swinging. Okay. So I swung. I don't even know what hit. I don't know if, if, if I hit the girl that hit me twice in the head from behind. I don't know if I hit another kid. I don't know. They were just on top of me. They, were, they, were, they chased me, hitting me, and yelling at me, and, and calling me, insulting me. That's it. Okay. So I don't know what knife they had. I don't know. I just saw two knives. That's it. The longer one and the shorter one. Okay. I, and I don't know where they are. I don't know who's got them. I don't know. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, get a sample of your DNA because I'm if if these knives don't belong to you, mm -hmm. I would imagine your DNA is not going to be on them. Well, I touched one of them. Yeah, you touched the one you grabbed. Yeah, you grabbed from the from kid. Him. Yeah. Um, would you Would you be willing to give me a sample yes. of your DNA? Okay. Yeah. Is that Is that a good thing? Is well, I mean, what? It, I mean, I don't know. I don't have a lawyer over here to us. Yeah, and certainly, so... Um, Should I wait? Well, I've got a colleague that's, that's um, in the process of writing a search warrant. So we're going to get it one way or another. Mm -hmm. I just thought if I could ask you, and we could just do it right now, I'll just, like, show you how to, like, what we would do. I know what it I is. I would just get your DNA sample. Yeah, yeah, such a big Q-tip. Yeah. Um, we'd also like to do an exam, have a nurse examine your body. That's absolutely okay. Okay, and I want her to look in your ears, and I want her to look at your back, and um, 
you know, the people that are in these groups, we're going to try to collect evidence from them because they might have your skin underneath their fingernails or, you know, we're going to do our best to get any yeah. evidence to, I mean, we can yeah, yeah, know what happened. Yeah, 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 I mean, and, and, and I know everything that would happen in the river, so. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah there's that part yeah. of it too, yeah. but. Um, Definitely. Okay. Yep, yeah. Okay. You can tell me. Okay. I just um, don't know if I had a lawyer present what he or she would say. Well, what I just want you to know that we would get it anyway. Okay. I've got a coworker that's writing a search warrant. If you would get it the anyway, judge. then let's do it. Okay. With with the court order or just let's do it now and get no, it done? No, no, no. Let's do it now and, okay. and give you what you need okay. to start your, your proceedings yeah. or your search. Yeah. Well, and yeah, I mean, if you, you sound like you were really afraid. Yeah. Um, I have I have a quadruple bypass. I have been out of shape. I have been in bed for for God for a long time for six months at least. I couldn't go to work. I'm not in the best. I mean, I was just floating down the river. Nothing much. Every once in a while, I got up so I could pee because I can't be in the in the, in the tender. You know, shouldn't tell you that on camera, but yes, most people have to get off the the thing. So I got out, I would get up and then hold on and then get back in. I mean, I, do, I don't do anything to, to, to stay in shape. I just, I'm a guy that wants to survive and work, keep working at reaching engineering, you know, and why these things happen, I, it's beyond me. I mean, I, 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 I don't understand. I mean, why would they, that many people, Come down on one person that didn't absolutely do anything. Take his goggles. Almost one wanted to pull my pants down. So I did your did your trunks have like a drawstring? Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. Didn't come down. Oh no, okay. no, 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 no. They came down a little bit, but no, because I okay. have a drawstring on it. So yeah, they they couldn't pull it down. But why? All of a sudden they were like whoops around me, and they were they were attacking me from all their directions. And I, I truly, truly feared for my life. I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I mean, these guys were talking over there. I didn't know what to say. I mean, I, I, was, I was just... Which guys are you talking about? My, my, oh, my, my, okay. my, my, my guys. So, and they were quite a bit distance, so they didn't see anything. I don't think they saw anything. And... So when you go back to your tube, do you guys get the hell out of there? Or no. Or do you, like, what do you do? We stayed there. Okay. Yeah, the girls called the cops. We didn't know what to do, um, and we stayed there for a long time. There were people coming. We even saw the, the sheriff coming, and I, I, they kept saying, oh, my, my God, they didn't know what happened. So they said, oh, my God, what happened? So there was a fight. There was a fight. And I said, yeah, I don't know what was going on after that. I thought they were still fighting. I Personally, when I came back, I saw a whole bunch of people coming over there, and yelling at each other, and I thought they were still fighting for some reason. I didn't know what was going on. So I personally wanted to stay and watch to see if the cops get them for, for fighting, you know, for whatever they were oh, doing. Sure. Okay. So I wanted to be a witness to them fighting. Gotcha. Or if they, the cops needed a witness, I wanted to sit there for as long as possible. And then the group said, well, there's so many people, there." I don't know, let's just get going. We don't want to get involved in this. And I was just in there. They attacked me. Yeah, but look at them now. They're attacking each other. I don't know what they're doing. So cops came, and we stayed there for, I don't know, another 10, 15 minutes. With when the police were there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then we decided, we'll go. Nobody asked me anything, and I said, I kept my mouth shut. I, and down the river we went. Okay. So... I was very shocked. I, I didn't know what, what just happened. We didn't tell you the truth. Well, Sandy said that you were quiet. I was very quiet. And you didn't really talk. Didn't want, I didn't know what to say. Yeah. I mean, I get my, excuse my French, my ass kicked by a whole bunch of kids. What am I going to say? I just got my ass kicked by this kid. Now the police is on top of them. Well, I think something is going to come out of it. Yeah. So I thought the police was there because they were fighting, you know. I, because these were just boys, and they were being obnoxious, not, not only picking on me, then these girls came over and hit me. So these are girls over here? Well... Mostly? Mostly. Okay. 
And this was all guys? Yeah, I didn't know who was in this group, but I know these were all guys because I I was I came I was snorkeling back and forth mm -hmm. and I asked them if they found something and they said, Well you know, they started calling me a molester. Then I got up and one of them took my, my goggles, threw me in the river, I went after them, one of them wanted to pull my pants down and there you go. So what happened? Can you tell me what happened? Yeah. Um, four people went to the hospital with injuries. Oh my God. And uh, one person died. Oh no. I don't know any of their names and I don't know any genders. So I, I don't Was know. Was that because they fought each other or is that the... I don't know. Okay. I don't know what their injuries are. I, I just, I was with Sandy the whole mm -hmm. time, and then when I kind of turned Sandy over to Ernesto and Amy, then I came here. Um, so I, I, I have no idea what their injuries were. Oh my um, God. Oh my God. So Anderson says this is all an act. And I've seen lots of people online say the same thing. But there's just no way he knew for sure that someone died. When he and his group continued floating down the river to leave, oh I'm sure they noticed that there were bad things going on. But there's just no possible way he could know for sure that someone actually died. But that's not to say that he isn't being dishonest. He's definitely said some very incorrect things here. So we just need to be able to like piece this together. You know, in your statement. What other pictures did they give you of me? Just that one. That's the only one I have. They didn't take... They, well, they had lots of cameras. You should take their yep, cameras. Yes, and so I have colleagues, yeah. investigators, that are that are talking to all of those, you know, the, the people in the group and the other witnesses. So yes, okay. we are we are trying to collect. And I told Ernesto and Amy, because um, they said that... Uh, Rosie? Rosie, yeah. Pictures? yeah. Okay. But um, I don't think she took any pictures of those guys. There well, was oh at the at the stop at the stop up here. Yes, but yeah. you were you were snorkeling. They might have been like taking oh, a selfie or something, and yeah, yeah, we could have gotten yeah, yeah. we could get these guys yeah. in the background that they don't even realize they have it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. So I asked them to go through their photos right, so that right, we would right, be right. Um, yeah, in contact yeah, with got them. Got it. Got it. Well, I was. Uh, all of a sudden you say that, like, why would they take pictures of me going over there? No, you just never know what you get in a picture. Yeah. If, you're, if they're sitting here waiting for you mm -hmm. and, and uh, yeah. Ariel to find the phone. Did you, did you find his phone? Um, I don't know. Again, I was, I've been with Sandy pretty much the whole time and now I came here with you. So I do know, I, I, I did get a message that the goggles on the snorkel were found. Um, so that's all the information that I have about like items that were located. Now my whole life is down the tubes. Well, I don't, I don't know if that's the case, because people have the right to defend themselves. I know, but this is, oh, this is Wisconsin. This is Wisconsin. Okay. You continue on. I, okay. I, I, I usually know that people that, that defend themselves, they end up being accused of being this and being that. Well, I think if you'd asked me what I would have done, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Enough. Yeah, you don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I would have been scared shitless, I can tell you that. When, when that many people yeah. Yeah, tried to pull your pants down and hit you, and yeah, and two, two, two boys had knives on them, they didn't find any of those two knives? I, I don't know. I don't know. But we're looking. And, you know, we're looking before it gets dark out. Um, I'm glad I actually took that kid from the knife. He would have stabbed me. He was not there to scare me. He was there to harm me. At least I'm, I'm here. But I'm sorry for what, what, it, how it ended up. Still scared, like I said. I'm scared that they're going to be finding out where I live and they're going to be hunting us at night and they're going to be hurt, hurting my wife. Well, I will call... Sandy, soon as I leave her, okay, mm -hmm. and just check in on her. Uh, find out about your medications. Have you had any medicine this morning? No, I take them in the evening. Okay, take them in the evening. Yeah. What What would happen if you don't take them Nothing. tonight? Nothing. I don't. I, I'm not even hungry. To okay, but if you don't take your medication tonight, is that life threatening? Mm, I don't think so. No. Okay. Oh, I mean, 
granted what happened today, you know, I was shocked. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't think so. I just can't believe what happened. You know, they, need, they, they need to maybe do sobriety tests on minors on that river. Maybe they need to put an end to drinking, uh, uh, underage drinking and doing drugs. The, the, that the river over there is is turned into a sewer. My second time, and I have dragged my wife out of there, pretty much against her will. I promised her it was going to be the best day. I made promises, promises. We're going to have a great time with this. But she didn't want to go. No. She always says, all oh, places like this, all they do is uh, smoke pot and do this. Yes, there is a lot of uh, pot smoking over there. We don't know who is legal, who is illegal. I don't know anything about Wisconsin laws, but you can smell it. It was everywhere in the air. Yeah. And I don't know what people do to, you do the DNA, you can find out, you know, what type of drugs are in my system. I've never done any of that stuff, so I don't know. I'm very clean, and it's as clean as they go. You looked at my criminal record, you can keep digging, there is nothing there because I don't have anything, not even a parking ticket, not a speeding ticket. You know, I'm as a law-abiding citizen as they come. But I fear for my life too. I mean, I went through a, a, a very serious oh, absolutely. surgery absolutely. to be alive, to be uh, 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 knocked down by a bunch of kids on the river. Well, I, I understand. And I'm not blaming the police. It's, it's a, I believe that's a private land. They have to have their own security there. Yeah. And they need to do better. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub these along your lower gum line and kind of inside your cheek. I'm going to do them both at the same time. It shouldn't hurt at all. If it doesn't, let me know. I'm going to put them in this box, and then I'm going to seal this bag while we're sitting here so yeah. you can see that I, that I sealed it, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'll just have you open up your mouth. Let's see here. Shouldn't, like I said, shouldn't hurt. All right. And you're okay with having the nurse do the exam on you? If you need pictures of your lungs from the body, you're okay with that? Yeah. These actually are from drag, from uh, trying to get out of the the, okay. the tubes in shallow water. Okay. You know, I had a hard time trying to stop the the train. Yeah. Can I just? I'm gonna. I know the nurse will too, but I'd like. Can I? Take, oh. Can I take a picture of it? Yes. Okay. But this was not from the confrontation. Oh, this wasn't. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood that. No, these are from scrapes on the river bottom. When I was when you were snorkeling. snorkeling. I got yes. you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, please don't use that. Yeah. I didn't touch those kids. I did okay. not. I did not swim, nothing. No, no, no. Okay. So after this, the video goes on for a couple more minutes. But it's just footage of the investigator placing the DNA evidence into the official packaging. And Nick Mew saying that he needs to go to the bathroom, which I believe he called a potty. Okay. You need to go potty. I can, have, I can make sure that happens. So do you think Nikolai Mew was purposefully being dishonest? Or do you think he was just as confused as everybody else was when they saw that video for the first time? I mean, if there were ever an excuse for temporary insanity, I think this probably qualifies. But I just have to go ahead and assume that he's purposefully being dishonest. But when you put yourself in the shoes of everyone involved in this case, whether it be the teenagers, the scumbags, or Mew himself, you got to think of all the possible reasons for these lies. And for everyone involved, including Mew, the lies are all meant to justify the actions that were taken. And when it comes to the teenagers in the scumbag group, all their dishonesty is meant to justify why they ganged up on an old man and brutally beat the crap out of him. But when I put myself in Mew's position, I have to ask myself, would I be 100% honest in his situation? Honestly, I don't know. I don't always recommend being honest with the police. But I think the best decision he could have made is to lawyer up immediately. Answering questions in an interrogation without a lawyer even makes innocent people look guilty. So let's skip forward and go back into the lieutenant's testimony. Thank you so much. Can you the restroom? 
Uh, Lieutenant Hart, was that the interview you did with uh, Nikolai and you at the jail? Yes. At the point when you left, was that the end of your questioning? Okay. Yes. Um, while you were talking to him, uh, you showed Mr. Mew a photo on your phone? Yes. What, what was that photo? That was a photo that had been disseminated to us of the suspect. you know where it came from? Um, at the time, did you know where it came from? Pro probably. I, I believe dispatch had emailed it out. Um, was it was it a photo from the video? Objection. Or from something else? Sustained. You know where the, 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 the photo originated from? I do. Where did it originate? From Jawan Cockfield's video. Did it? Right While you're talking to Mr. Mew, uh, you were referring to a diagram? Yeah. Lieutenant Hart, I'm showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 16. Do you recognize that? I do. And what is it? Uh, this is the diagram that I asked him to draw me while we were talking. Did he draw portions of that? He drew all of it. I uh, made. I put the words on there. All right. While you're speaking with Mr. Mew, did you notice any signs of impairment? No. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing further. Let's take a short recess then. Uh, we'll come back at 10.25. And of course, we'll be skipping the break. Please be seated. <coughs> Cross, uh, Mr. Trofessy. Good morning, Lieutenant. Morning. Uh, in your 25 years in law enforcement, I, is it fair to say that you've had the opportunity uh, numerous times to question both victims of crimes and people accused of crimes? Yes. And in this particular case, if I have it right, the interview with Mr. Mew takes place approximately four little more than four hours after the incident. Is that fair? Yeah. And um, to your knowledge, for most of those four hours, he was in, the majority of those four hours, he was in police custody somewhere, right? I believe so. Okay. And in situations like this where they call you in, which would be considered a, would that be considered a serious situation when you get called in? Yeah. And in those situations, you're trying to gather as much evidence and as much information as quickly as possible. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And in your 25 years in law enforcement, have you been involved in situations that you would consider to be highly stressful events? Yes. Would you consider this to be a highly stressful event? Yes. And would you agree that in those highly stressful, have you interviewed victims of offenses and uh, people who are accused of offenses involving highly stressful events? Yes. And in those highly stressful events, both the victim and the accused can be feeling kind of the same emotions sometimes. Is that right? Sure. Okay. And would you agree in your training and experience that highly stressful events can impact someone's ability to recall what had happened? Yes. At both for the a complaining witness or victim, as well as the person who's accused. Would that be fair? Fair. And you'd agree that doesn't mean that the person is necessarily lying. Sometimes these stressful events kind of cloud memories and make it difficult for them to recall events, correct? Yes. Speculation. Overruled. I think you said yes? Yes. <clears throat> um, and would you agree that based on your training and experience, how long someone suffers from a stressful event, meaning how they react to it. That can depend upon, I mean, it can differ in terms of timing, right? What I mean by that is you might suffer the same stressful event as I suffer. You might be over that stressful event in a much shorter time than I would be over it. Is that fair? Yes. And because it's a, it, it's a criminal investigation and you're working at a, at a quick pace here, you're not given the opportunity to kind of let things calm down before you do your investigation, right? I don't, I don't know if I understand your question. Okay, so let me give you an example. So in an example, if this fact pattern involved an officer, that officer would have an opportunity before they had to give a statement, correct? 
And officers after, don't have to give statements immediately after stressful events. They're allowed to kind of calm down and think about it before they're required to provide a statement. True. Objection irrelevant. Sustained. Did you give, or was Mr. Mew given an opportunity um, in terms of timing to calm down from the situation, kind of make sure that he had all his faculties before he provided a statement? I, I, I don't know, other than the four hours between the time he was taken into custody and I spoke with him. And those, I'm not being critical of you here, I'm asking you, you're not, you don't know whether or not those four hours he was still under the stress of the event, right? I don't know. Okay. And I'm not going to ask you about what you saw in the video, but what I'm going to ask you about is you're aware there's a video in the case, right? Yes. Okay. And when someone gives you a statement about what had happened, it's helpful for you as an investigator to be able to go back to that video and kind of determine the accuracy of that person's statement, right? Sure. Okay. And while you're able to determine whether or not the person's statements are accurate, um, what the video really doesn't capture and what you need to try to figure out is what the person was feeling or what their beliefs were at the time, correct? I don't know if that's up for me to decide. No, but in terms of your investigation, you'll ask people things like, how did that make you feel when something was happening? That You'll ask them questions about their emotions because their emotions might not be borne out on a video. True? True. And, and they, people will tell you, I was afraid, I was worried, I was stressed. They'll, they'll make those statements to you when you ask those questions, correct? Yeah, yes. Okay. <clears throat> and tell me if this is fair. So you, after conducting the interview with Mr. Mew, you've watched the video, right? The video of the incident? Video of the incident. Yes. Okay. And you agree his statements regarding how he got the knife, those are inaccurate, correct? Yes. Okay. And you did ask Mr. Mew what his beliefs were or how he was feeling while all this was going on, correct? Do you remember that during the interview? I guess I don't recall if I asked him how he was feeling, but he articulated that to me. Okay, he had mentioned to you how he was feeling, true? Yes. Okay. And would you agree that once you kind of get into the meat of the interview, first thing out of Mr. Mew's mouth is that he was acting in self-defense, right? Yes. Okay. And he says that if I have it right, three times in his first statement to you was it was self-defense. Yes. Okay. And he told you in that first portion of the interview that they were hitting him, right? Yes. And that's true, correct? That's borne out on the video. Yes? Objection, Your Honor. The video speaks for itself. Sustained. Is it sustained? Can I ask you this? Um, Although some of the things that Mr. Mew had talked to you about regarding um, how he obtained the knife, we agree that was incorrect. Um, would you agree, uh, based on your interview with Mr. Mew, he never wavered in his claim it was self-defense, correct? Correct. He never wavered in his claim that he was fearful, correct? Correct. And he never wavered in his claim that he was attacked, correct? Correct. If I told you, and I don't know if you've counted, I counted approximately 20 times during that interview that he claimed it was self-defense, he was fearful, or they attacked him. Sound about right? Yes. Okay. And you've sat through, I know you weren't here yesterday because you weren't feeling well, but you've sat through the trial uh, of every other witness other than when you weren't here, right? Yes. Okay. And you've listened time to times when witnesses had to be corrected or shown something that turned out not to be true based on the video, right? Yes. Okay. Do you have any information through your investigation that contradicts Nick Mew's belief that he was in fear during that incident? Objection, Your Honor. Come on up. The objection is sustained. In terms of what had happened that day in your interview with Mr. Mew, okay, the recorded interview we just watched, he didn't make any other statements to you that would give you any reason to believe that he wasn't in fear, correct? Objection, you're on the same grounds. Overall. Can you ask that again? I don't know. 
Based on your interview with Mr. Mew on the day in question, right? When you interviewed him on the yes. tape. Yes. Uh, he told you he was in fear, yes? He did. Okay. Did he provide any other statements to you that would contradict that statement that he was in fear? No. And to be fair, he told you multiple times in that interview that he was in shock about what happened and didn't remember everything. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And that, based on your training and experience, that wouldn't be unusual, would it? No. Okay. Uh, you've had that with other people who have been complaining witnesses or victims of offenses? Yes. And have you had that with people who have been accused of crimes? Probably. Okay. He never denied that he defended himself with a knife, correct? Correct. What he got wrong was how he got the knife, but he told you that he used it on other people, correct? Yes. Okay. And he told you other things that you actually found out to be true, right? Like he had a snorkel and goggles, right? Yes. Okay, and you found those, not you, but your police found those, right? Yes. Okay, so that's true, right? Yes. He told you that he was looking for Ariel's phone, correct? Yes. You guys found Ariel's phone, right? Yes. Okay. Um, he told you that people were calling him a, a, I think he says the word child molester, um, but it's true people were calling him names, correct? Yes. Okay. I think he also told you on the tape that they were attacking me from all directions. Is that right? He did say that. Okay. Do you, in your investigation, do you have any evidence through interviews of witnesses or anything else that that's not correct? Objection, Your Honor. Please approach. Yes. I'll sustain the objection on foundation grounds. Uh, Mr. Trophacy, you may continue. Uh, Lieutenant Hart, have you, can you just give me a brief synopsis of the investigation that you've done in this case? Yes. Um, I interviewed Sandy. Okay. I interviewed Mr. Mew. Okay. Um, and I coordinated um, the uh, translation and transcription of Hispanic speaking statements and 911 calls. So the investigators that, who have testified, you're their boss? I'm their supervisor, yes. Okay. Um, in an investigation like this, do those reports pass over your desk? Do you see those? I would say a majority of them, not all of them. Okay. Do you, so you're aware, well, tell me if you're aware that there has been multiple interviews conducted in this case by your investigators, right? Yes. Of multiple eyewitnesses or people who claim to be eyewitnesses to what has happened, right? Yes. And those, have those reports passed over your desk? Not all of them. Have some of them passed over your desk? Yes. Okay. Based on the information that you have seen, the reports that you've seen, the interviews that you've conducted, any other evidence that you've been able to look at, uh, my question to you was, uh, is there any evidence uh, that contradicts the statement that Mr. Mew had made to you on that interview that he was surrounded in all directions? I don't know. You don't know? Well, I haven't read every single report for this case. On the stuff that you've read. I can't ask you about things you don't know. What I can ask you is on the things that you've read, the reports that you've reviewed, the interviews that you've conducted, there's nothing that contradicts his statement that he was surrounded, right? Your Honor, I'm going to object because it's fine against the time. There's a three minute period here. Overruled. <clears throat> can you answer the question? So your question is if I've seen any of the reports that I've read. I'm asking you if any of the evidence that you've reviewed in totality, whatever you've reviewed in the totality, okay? There's nothing in the evidence that you've reviewed, the witnesses that you've spoken to, that contradicts Nick's statement that he was surrounded when he told you that, right? Yeah, he's the only interview I've conducted. You've reviewed other reports though, right? Yeah. Okay. And he... I think he said in his interview with you that he, he said, all I want, guys, did you find a phone, right? Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. And through testimony you've seen and witness statements that you've read, you know Joan Cockfield's holding a phone, correct? Yes. Okay. And through your investigation, you'd agree there were no little girls in that area at the time, right? Not that I'm aware of. 
Okay. So would you agree there's nothing factually in terms of evidence that would that you know about that would support the claim that people have said that he was looking for little girls? There were none, right? There were none. No. If you would have suspected he was impaired, would you have followed up on that? Yes. Okay. How? I mean, what would you, just tell me what you would have done. Well, I probably would have applied for a search warrant for his blood. Okay. Because uh, that would, if a person's intoxicated in this situation, in the situation that happened, this incident, knowing that would be, would matter to you, right? Yeah. It's all turn. Thank you. Mr. Smastad. Um, Lieutenant Hart, as you were interviewing Mr. Mew, did he at any point say anything about being strangled? No. Did he say anything about uh, having injury or pain to his neck or throat? No. Did you see any injuries on his face at all? No. How, how many feet away from him were you during that interview? However wide a table is. Uh, can you describe the lighting in the interview room? It was well lit. Did Mr. Mew say anything about hearing anybody threaten him with a phrase similar to, you've got 10 seconds? No. At the time that you interviewed Mr. Mew towards the end, when he asks you what happened, did you know that he had already been informed that he was under arrest for homicide and attempted homicide? Objection, speculation. I'm asking if she knew. I'll sustain the objection. You'll have to rephrase the question. Did you have any knowledge as to what he had been informed of with regard to charges when he was arrested? No. When you asked, when Mr. Mew asked you what happened and you told him that someone had died, what was his response? I believe he said, oh, no. Did he appear to be surprised? I'm going to object. Sustained speculation. At one point in the video, you see him put his head in his hands? Yes. Did you see any tears? No. <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Troffs, he asked you about the stress that a victim can go, can undergo, and in your opinion, you said, yeah, that sometimes that happens. Um, the same go for 17-year-old kids who saw their best friend get stabbed to death? Yes. And the same goes for the people who actually were stabbed? Yes. Did Mr. Mew ever waver in his claim that he did not himself have a knife on the river? No. Did he, do you know how many times he denied having a knife on the river? If you remember? I don't remember, but it was more than once. Did he ever waver in his claim that two of these boys pulled knives on him? No. Did he appear to recall details of all, how that all happened? Yes. At one point in the video, he asked if anybody had found a phone. Do you recall that? I do. You know what phone he was talking about at that point of the interview? Objection, speculation. Sustained. During your interview, did he specify whose phone he was looking for? Yes, I believe he told me it was Ariel's. Nothing further. Mr. Trophacy? Because he didn't tell you anything about hearing somebody say you got 10 seconds you're not saying that means it didn't happen right that somebody didn't say that right okay and because he didn't mention to you that he had been strangled you're not saying that that means it didn't happen right no or uh complain about neck pain or being hit in the face you're not saying that because he didn't say he wasn't hit in the face or however he was hit you're not saying because he left something out that that didn't occur, right? Right. That's all. Thank you, Lieutenant Hart. You may step down. Mr. Anderson, does the state have more evidence? No, Judge. All right. The state rests. Uh, members of the jury, there are a few items that I need to discuss with the attorneys uh, in private. Uh, so we're going to have a recess. This may be a little bit longer than some of the earlier recesses. Uh, so please be patient. We will get back to you uh, before the lunch hour. Please take the jury out. All rise for the jury. And the prosecution rested its case. So, without watching the video of the stabbings, I can admit that I would absolutely think this guy was guilty. 
I could even understand how someone might think that after watching the video, but after looking at it in slow motion or frame by frame, it's really hard for me not to see self-defense. Because when you compare what actually happened in the video to the testimony that was given by everyone involved, you can clearly see that everyone's perception was completely incorrect. And that includes Mew himself. But I'm inclined to believe that he made up a few things as well. But I also think the blonde chick lied about being punched. I think what most likely happened is she had her hands on Mew and he swatted her hand away. But at the end of the day, whether he punched her or not, her hand should not have been on him while she was screaming at him and making demands and cussing and yelling in his face. This is simply not how to behave. So the prosecution's entire case rests upon the fact that Mew lied about a whole lot of things. But in order for me to care about those things, I'd have to close my eyes and plug my ears every time they played the video. I just can't understand how they got the conviction. Anyway, there's one last tidbit left for this video. Please be seated. We are outside the presence of the jury. I am meeting with the attorneys and with Mr. Mew in open court. Uh, Mr. Nelson, uh, is there anything that you want to address? Yes, Judge. So, so, Judge, I would, and I, I'm not looking at the information, so I apologize. Um, but as it relates to, uh, I'm going to do it by um, the names. Yes. As it relates to um, Dante Carlson and Anthony Carlson um, and um, Riley Madison, uh, th those three people, uh, Mr. Mew is charged with an attempt. Uh, attempted homicide on those counts. Um, and in reviewing the requirements for an attempted homicide, um, and this will be short, Judge, I'm not going to waste your time, but what it says is it requires the defendant to did acts toward the commission of that crime which indicate unequivocally. And unequivocally is defined as it means no other inference or conclusion can reasonably and fairly be drawn from the defendant's acts under the circumstances. So, which indicate unequivocally, under all the circumstances, that he had formed that intent and would have caused the death of the intended victim, except for the intervention of another person or some extraneous factor. Extraneous factor is defined as something outside the knowledge of the defendant or outside of the defendant's control. There has been testimony from Dr. Meyer yesterday. Um, Dr. Meyer was only asked about one of these people, and that was A.J. Martin. And that question to A.J. about A.J. Martin was, would, it, without medical intervention, would A.J. Martin have died? And his answer was, yes. Oh. As it relates to Dante Carlson, my recollection of the evidence was he said he fixed a hernia. Um, there was no testimony as to anything regarding um, Anthony Carlson. As it relates to Riley Madsen, I believed uh, there was questions surrounding that, and what he had said was that eventually she could have suffered uh, an infection. I think he mentioned sepsis. Uh, could have been something that would have occurred. I would argue to the court that based on the evidence, and you have to take the evidence under all the facts and circumstances, um, that based on the actions of Mr. Mew, based upon the testimony regarding the injuries uh, to the people I'm mentioning, Dante Carlson, Anthony Carlson, and Riley Madsen, uh, it is I would argue that it is not possible to say that no other inference can be drawn, uh, but that he intended to kill those people. Um, and there's actually no information that Dante Carlson or Anthony Carlson would have died from their injuries anyway. Um, so without any other extraneous factor, which would have prevented Mr. Mew from doing this, so we have one... You, you heard the evidence, you can figure out how you would view the movements. But I would argue that the facts and circumstances presented to the court and to the jury here uh, do not support the claim 
uh, that he unequivocally intended to kill these people. Uh, Riley Madsen said she thought she was punched. Uh, she initially believed it was a punch. Uh, and I don't think they're, uh, although not the deciding factor, I don't think their injuries support the claim of uh, an attempted first degree intentional homicide. So I would move uh, for dismissal on those, what, whoever those, whatever those counts are, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, who's going to argue for the state? I can, Judge. So uh, I think this case, it's similar to if you compare it to, say, a shooting case where somebody walks up to somebody, shoots them in the torso, in the chest, and it happens to miss vital organs and they just need stitches. Um, I don't think, I think it's a difficult argument to make that they didn't intend to kill them. And it's the same thing here. He's stabbing all these people in the area of vital organs, veins, blood vessels. Um, his intent can be, <laughs> intent is based on all facts and circumstances. He sliced AJ up the belly. He stabbed Isaac directly in the heart. He stabbed Tony, Dante, and Riley in the area of all the vital organs. Dante was stabbed right below where his heart is. Tony was stabbed twice, one he blocked. That's certainly a, something out of Nikolai's control. Um, Riley was sliced across her side, damaging her stomach and her diaphragm. And so I think given all the facts and circumstances, it's, there's clearly enough for it to go to the jury. The, and, but for the chance that he didn't happen to hit vital organs, um, I think the jury can still conclude his intent was to kill them. All right, this motion is being made after the close of state's evidence. Um, there is a particular standard that I have to apply. Uh, in fact, the motion must be denied if, uh, considering the state's evidence in the most favorable light, uh, the evidence adduced, believed, and rationally considered is sufficient uh, that pertain to this motion. I am satisfied that the motion must be denied. Um, there is, uh, the state has presented uh, credible evidence that Mr. Mew uh, formed the intent to kill uh, by inserting a knife into the torso of the three individuals uh, during a physical confrontation. Uh, the torso, as we all know, <clears throat> contains uh, vital organs, uh, blood supply, nerves, and other anatomy uh, that, if injured, uh, could lead to death. I believe that the, the risk of death is self-evident uh, when faced with a knife uh, stabbed to that uh, area. Uh, there was an intervening event, um, and I think the state has presented evidence uh, about uh, the individual's uh, fortitude to uh, defend themselves, uh, to resist injury, uh, the intervention of first responders, and intervention of uh, formal medical treatment in a hospital setting. Uh, so for all of those reasons, I am satisfied that the state has presented uh, sufficient evidence to warrant the case to continue. The motion is denied. Um, is there anything else at this moment? Judge, at the, at the defense's opportunity, the defense intends to call uh, Nick New to testify. Um, If we could just take a five minute break to make sure uh, I go through the colloquy with him privately and then we can come back and do that here in court. Very good. Uh, have your conversation. We'll come back at 11.05. And there you have it. That's the entire case from the prosecution, minus all the BS anyway. So in the next video, we'll be covering Muse testimony. And I have a feeling that one's going to take a little while, but I'll be back with it as soon as possible. See you soon. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. Thank you. Is that it? Nope, just another turd.